Hello. Welcome back to Two Kims, One Pod. I'm one of the Kims. It's Peter. And I am the other Kim. I'm Unji. And we're not related. Thanks for coming back to the pod, y'all. Um, here's what. We've rebranded. We've relaunched a few yes. weeks ago. This is like episode 10 or something. Yes. I just want to say to everyone... Please check out the Patreon. We have cool stuff on the Patreon. I know some of you don't even know we have a Patreon yet. So go check out patreon.com slash 2kimsonepod. Um, there's all this uh, BTS video um, stuff that you haven't seen before. Um, we do bonus footage. We do um, artwork. Um, sometimes we'll tell stories that we can't really share. <laughs> On the public sphere? I mean, um, you should which, join if only to hear Peter come so close to ruining his show business career. To <laughs> absolutely cutting my career short. Burning his bridges. He can wait. Cu- cutting myself off at the knees. Um, yeah, because, you know, I don't want to do it out here because there's a lot of you listening. But on the Patreon, there's less of you. So We name and I know, names. We name and names. I, know, I, I name names. And I know your names, too, the Patreon people. So if I hear the rumors going around... Trust and believe I'm going to come follow you. And I have your addresses too because that's where we send your merch. <laughs> so keep the tea to yourself and hush. There's there's a, a small enough number of you where I could track down who, um, who said what I said about <laughs> that person who, who will be unnamed on the regular pod. But go check out the Patreon and you'll see all, everything we're talking about. And please be sure to leave a review underneath the oh, iTunes yes. uh, um, if you can. I mean, it's so helpful, it's helpful. for the algorithm. It really is. It's just, yeah. it's so necessary. And and we love the reviews. We screenshot them and share with each other. They really do mean a lot to us oh, because yeah, there do. aren't, there are still like enough of you where it really matters. You know what I mean? Like where yeah. it, like it's... I mean, just like Peter was saying, there's just a few enough. Uh, they're just um, the right number where we can see and uh, know exactly who you are. Uh, it's just like my fans. Every time you uh, like and start to follow me on Instagram, I do research you. Uh, yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> the numbers are so low that we get every alert and every notification. You're not so getting lost. In believe. The, you're not getting no. lost in the mix. Trust me. <laughs> And she is fully stalking you, figuring out what you bought that week, where you're going to vacation. She's like really doing her financial sleuthing on anyone who likes her post. And you know, like it's like it, they don't even have to like her post; they could just view. Yes, you know, and in I'm TikTok. Following. Yeah, you know, in TikTok, they you can just you can see who's come to your page, even yes. though they didn't like anything. Yes, this bitch will track them down and figure the out little why. footsteps and yeah. figure out why. <laughs> Who else you're connected to? Yeah, that's what's happening in my life. <laughs> that's the level. Not much. Not much. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's happening in my life. I joined a new gym. Ooh. Did I tell you this? No. Wait. Okay. I did. Last week we heard about the new gym, but we did not hear like we, we did. Should, oh, we heard about the sauna, but we did not hear the steam room. The steam room. The, yeah. The embarrassing situation in the steam room. If you don't know what happened, go back to the last week's and. Or oh no! It wasn't. No, it was in the live. It was in the live. So we can talk about it here. I didn't talk about it on the no, pod. You talked about oh it on the live. Oh my god! Oh okay. Well, the for the five people who watched the live, um, skip this part. <laughs> but <laughs> so I joined a new gym, Unji, and I haven't been to the gym since before. I haven't belonged to a gym since before I started comedy. Huh? Which is two thousand nine. <laughs> Peter. So it's been fourteen years. Peter. A full freshman in high school. Peter. Since I've been to the gym. But okay. You live in LA. I know, but listen to me. I didn't live in LA my whole life. Sure, sure. Okay, so I started comedy in 2009, right? Yeah. So once you start comedy, you stop caring, at least for me and all the comedians I know, we stop caring about what we look like. Sure. Sure. What we dress like. Yes. We stop like giving a fuck about anything that has to do with um, aesthetics. The mortal because, coil. Right. Yes. Yes. None of it matters. It's all up here. Mm-hmm. And you know how it is, Anji. Like Chicago comedy is very like salt of the earth. There's no like Matt Rife hot guy TikTok comedy in Chicago. Like it's just like <laughs> it's salt of the earth. The den, the de, most denigrates of society. It can be argued there is no Matt Rife comedy, but whatever. <laughs> oh well. 
If you guys don't know who Matt Reif is, he's like a extremely hot TikToker he's who's very also hot. a comedian. Yes. He's so stinking hot. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, that's how he came became popular because he was the hot guy doing comedy. Because mm-hmm. and that's how little hotness is around in comedy that one man can be hot and it disrupts the entire industry. You only need one okay looking symmetrical face to upend the entire comedy institution of Chicago. So I, you know, you and I coming up and you still in Chicago, Yes, you don't deal, you deal with mostly like sadness. Yeah, It's like, it's fat, Sad, drunk, mm-hmm. cheese eating, kind of like I'm a decrepit human being behavior comedy, right? Yeah, it's, it's self deprecating. It's four to sevens who are being charming. That's right. F- four to sevens in Chicago yes. being charming. Yes. Which is in LA and New York, barely a blip yes, on yes. the radar. Uh, sewer rats, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, all that to say, I never saw anyone working out. Mm-hmm. When I did when I did Chicago comedy, none of us went to the gym. None maybe some of the straight guys played basketball once in a while, but like they would inevitably break an ankle. You know what I mean? Their glasses would fall and it, it's just like straight up nerd, <laughs> like freaks and geeks nerd. Like getting stomped out. That's how I felt Chicago comedians were. Chicago comedians getting dragged right now. <laughs> I, I I I cut my teeth in Chicago, yes, so yes. I know that. Name one hot Chicago comedian. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> you can't take that long. You can't take that long to to, uh, uh, to identify hotness in Zacco, your own Zacco. community. Zacco's pretty hot. Zacco. Yeah. Okay. Zacco. I don't know who that is. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but I'll I'll look him up. I'll be the judge of that. Let me look it up right now. <laughs> Spell his name for me. Z a k o Zach Ryan. Z a k o. Yeah, Zacho. He's pretty good looking. Zacho Ryan. Mm-hmm. Let me see this motherfucker right now. Oh damn, he's hot. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I, this I, yeah. guy looks like. Does he have Conan hair? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, oh he's my god, these arm, these sleeved arm. Is he yes. funny? He's funny. He's funny. He's funny. <sighs> You know, he's like very good at cr- crowd work. He's very charming. <sighs> Comedy's dead. Yeah. <laughs> this is trash. <laughs> like we're anyway. treating we're treating good looking people like immigrants to <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what are Why these are you taking doing? our jobs? Why are you taking our jobs? <laughs> <laughs> you here. lazy fucks. All you have to do is be pretty. Um, well, good for you. Good for hot guys doing comedy. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not hot and I'm doing comedy. So I was not going to the gym for a long time. And I finally said, and, and then pandemic hit. Right. So clearly I wasn't going to the gym. Um, not that I needed that excuse, but <laughs> I, uh, and so now that we've been out of it, mm-hmm. I told you I was doing Pilates yes. a few episodes ago. I was in this Pilates class and all these Asian girls and their moms. Confused by you. Confused because I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I guess like project enough homosexuality <laughs> So they're all staring at me like a straight piece of Korean meat <laughs> <laughs> who's trying to get his core strengthened. So, I mean, all of it is so crazy. Oh it's so nuts. Anyway, so I had to leave this gym. A, because um, the Korean ajumas were giving me too much pressure to... Um, it's like there was no words exchange. Yeah. But I can tell they were looking at me like, you want to do my daughter? Yeah. Explain yeah. yourself. Explain yourself. Why are you in your forties? Yes. Yeah, so why? <laughs> why are you in your forties? And why don't? Why are you not married? Um. Where is all that consulting money go- going? Um. Yes. Like- <laughs> and what do you think of my daughter, Grace. Esther? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> my Hannah is just as pretty as any Grace. Yeah. <laughs> my Hannah will be will not be a tour for any man. <laughs> That's a little conglish joke for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you're a Korean, you might have. No, I bet you still didn't enjoy that. <laughs> Apologies. Anyway, um, so I joined a gym, and when you join a gym, uh, most gyms they'll like tack on a free, um, what's it called? Training session. Personal training yeah. session, so that. A, you could like get the session and be like marketed to sure. towards and blah, blah, blah. So 
they did all my like body measurements and stuff. Turns you were out assessed. I, I was assessed. Um, I did pass with a C plus, <laughs> and they said you need some work, especially um, around your muscle to fat ratio. It's off. <laughs> And I was surprised, um, but <laughs> they were like, you have way too much fat, way, way too little muscle. And I was like, that makes sense. I am a comedian. And he, they were like, okay, we get it. Um, so we're going to have to put you in this training thing. And the training sessions, because this guy was a tier X or whatever, the highest tier. Okay. He, um, he cost $135 a session. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck? Even my therapy, like my... Yes. Mental therapy is not that much, yes. you know? And they were like, okay, um, you know, there are other trainers, blah, blah. What kind of trainer would you like to meet? Like, what kind of gender um, okay. do you prefer? Uh-huh. And I just look at the head training person and I was like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, if they're a man or a woman or whatever, I don't care what they are, you know, to for in order for me to train with them. Like, I just need them to look like, an angry Asian father. You know what I mean? Someone who I'm going to like Listen feel to. shame around and really jump at the chance to make him proud. So they hooked me up with this one guy, Fuji. He's a Japanese guy, big, okay. like 200 pounds of muscle. Wait, you huge. really told them that you were looking for an Asian father figure and they're like, <laughs> truly LA is wild. No, no, no. I didn't say that. I I I was think of course I'm thinking that because I'm like I'm not going to listen to anyone that doesn't look like my fucking like raging father yeah, you know sure. what I mean like yeah, yeah. and also I'm realizing I'm 40 years old I've been in therapy half my life mm-hmm. I'm not getting any better no I'm just going to keep um wanting to you know um I'm going to keep wanting to make my dad proud even though he died 16 years ago you know what i mean so like yeah. i just still have that in my head so i was like if, if it's going to be anyone it's going to be an asian guy yeah <laughs> they gave me an asian guy <laughs> and he he was a big dude mm-hmm. like muscle big okay like one of the bigger asian guys i've ever seen like you're talking um, like no neck all shoulders z- all all deltoids yeah no neck yeah um he had like arms like bulging out like he was thick I got to say, muscle guys, if any of you guys are listening or if you know a muscle guy, uh, can we have a conversation about your necks? Like, I mean, we just need <laughs> necks. Like, they're important. Like, it, it's, it's, I know it doesn't feel like you need Let it. Let me tell you, I'm not a muscle guy and I still have no neck. So I don't know if it's about muscles or not. I, I'll just, tell you right now. I'm just saying, we, we, everyone has like leg day. You know about leg day? We need a neck yeah. day. Like, you know, we need something <laughs> where... That is being accentuated. It's an important part of loosen it up. The physiology, like it's a big part of yeah. like nodding. It's a lot big part of saying no, shaking no, shaking yeah, no. Exactly. It's a lot of like it's a very important part of um of having attitude. Um, That's it's, right. Like it's a it's a vital part of the physiology. Yeah. Um, how do you look both ways before crossing <laughs> without a neck? That's useful. <laughs> No one's talking about all these muscle guys dying from crossing the street. The street because they only could look straight ahead. <laughs> okay, so he's huge. Okay, I just I, had, I I I'm seeing him now. The no necks. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. My thigh looked like his neck, oh, and wow. he and he's like really taking me through the training. Yeah. you know, and I'm uh, and I, I haven't trained. I haven't like lifted anything in a long time. So sure, I'm obviously struggling. Uh huh, and. <sighs> To physically struggle next to someone who kind of looks like you, but like a, a like a hundred times better, is so fucking demoralizing, and it doesn't make me want to work out more. It makes me want to like go home. Yes. You know? Yes. So I, at the end of the session, I'm already thinking like 135 dollars. This is not worth it. Mm-hmm. I feel bad. Yeah. You know, like he is like an angry Asian dad, but like I'm not feeling like motivated right now. Like I mean, it turns doesn't... out you don't want to live out that pattern. So there is something there. There's something there. There's something there, right? So yeah. I'm like, all right, and you know, I, I'm I'm already feeling like trepidation about like how am I going to say no to this guy? To mm-hmm. you know, because they're really big on sales and they're like they're good salespeople. 
So they're like, yes, you know, they're we're, we're going to put most, you down and yes, blah, blah, blah. You your know? deepest insecurities. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, I got to like make sure I'm strengthened and like my will is strengthened yes. so that the at the end of this, when he comes in for like the killer, like closing moment, yes. I can say, no, thank you, you know, and you're move on. You're girding yourself. You're, that's the only strength that strength conditioning you've done that day. Right. Internal. Internal. Yes. Right. We yeah. will. Yeah, exactly. My brain power. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, you know, just stay strong. And we're nearing the end because I can tell. And he's like, okay, let's get up on to, there's like a, a, like a massage mat where they're like stretching you out. And I was like, oh, this is part of it. And he was like, well, yeah, you have to work out and then you have to stretch out at the end. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I thought I would just stretch by myself, but okay. But so he like lifts me onto the table, (laughs) makes me lay down on my back takes my knees and starts stretching my knees towards my face yeah and i'm literally in like happy baby pose Uh and he's like his pelvis is like (laughs) near near my grundle your grundle you know what i mean because he's like push he's i'm on like happy baby style and he's pushing my legs over okay so it's it looks like he's almost like mounting you yeah, like yeah. missionary style mounting me. Yeah, yeah, and clearly yeah. he's not, but like it f- it looks like it. It's groin to groin, yeah. And the v- it's groin to groin. And the vantage point, he's looking down at me mm-hmm. and he's going like, can you do a little more? Yeah. Can you go more? And I'm like, yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've never, I, I'm, he's Japanese. So I'm like, otosa. <laughs> So anyway, I signed up for like his package of six. So I'm the I'm final fucked. colonization. Like, <laughs> you know, my my Korean um, ancestors are like they stripped our culture away, they raped and pillaged our lads, and this is what you do. Yes, daddy. <laughs> like you get pulled, yeah. <laughs> you get stretched into a pretzel in, in public. In front of a huge Japanese guy with no neck, and you liked it. I mean, <laughs> I, know, I know. I feel terrible in so many ways, especially financially, because now I have to go pay this guy for six sessions. Wow. I know. Did you feel stronger? Um, I felt like I learned something for sure about your sexuality. About my sexuality, yes. Um, I've never been touched or molested by anyone in my family. Uh, but now I'm like, maybe I did. I don't know. I, and I have, I've been suppressing it. Maybe I've been suppressing it. I don't know. Sometimes these memories get like yeah, pushed down. <laughs> I mean, it is fu- funny that like you thought it was gonna your patterns were gonna play out one way, and yeah. like that it was gonna be like you I was wanted really convinced that the that... paternal sort of um, mm-hmm. like will was something that you were seeking, and it turns out you were actually looking for a colonizer. Yes, exactly. Like Someone that. To... Tell you exactly, like in a in a bad way. Like not you weren't looking. You want to be. You don't want a choice. You don't want that approval. No, I was looking for absolute subjugation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have been trying to. So the gym itself, is it like really nice? Is it one of these like nice Hollywood? It's a nice gym. It's a nice okay. gym. Yeah. Okay. I had to because I can't be in a gym where they're like, uh, there's no, like if, I, if I'm if i ever at a gym and like there's a towel, like there's no towel. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. You okay, I mean? so like, you're too good for the planet fitness. You're you're beyond the planet. I I'm out of the universe. Don't even. I'm not going to a planet fitness. I don't care how little moans there are. What the fuck you're advertising? I love that. Like their advertisement is like people groaning when they lift weights. It's like not here. No one groans. I'm like yeah, because no one works out at your place. You don't have towels, and it smells like black mold. It's disgusting. I mean, I've never belonged to a gym either. Um. I am actively not working out as well, but like I, I've never belonged to a gym because it, it, it does feel like it's a culture that I am not mm. looking to learn about. Like my mom is, started taking me to Bally's Total Fitness when I was in fourth grade. Yeah, oh so I've been a gym rat since I was nine. Okay, so can I tell you the worst 
beating I ever got. <laughs> This is all coming back to me. Was because I would not go to my go with my mom to a Bally's. Bally's. Shut the fuck. Swear up. to God, my mom. Are you serious? Because okay, what was this- it with Bally's Total Fitness that like these Korean moms were like, "There's a fire sale happening. We have to get our exactly. children was enrolled." It, was there something happening in the nineties? I think because- there was like a family plan being uh, um, uh, offered or something like that. Because every one of my cousins were signing up, and yes. like, my mom was like, "Look at your cousins, like yes. they're." They're working out like you're too fat. You got to go to the gym. And I'm like, I'm in fourth grade. What was happening? Truly, like listeners, if you're out there and you were a Korean 90s kid, what was happening with the Bally's? Like, why were we going to Bally's? And where is Bally's now? (laughs) It's out of business, right? Yeah, yeah, they were bought by uh, somebody like a venture capitalist or whatever. Planet Fitness. That's what happened. But yeah. I mean, but the, what was happening? Like, was this coming down from corporate, like from Bally's corporate, where they're like, we need, we need these immigrant families to come in. And, we, and I'm sure a lot of them are little fatties because they've been living in America just long enough where they know they yeah. need to work out. Like, what they was happening? They forgot how to struggle. So <laughs> let's get these fatties in. What was happening in the culture? Because, yes, my, my parents. But you know what I think it was? Because this is the what? issue. I think it was because there was a sauna there. And it was in the oh, in American there, culture. Because there was a, oh, yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because there was no jim bang. Like, there was there's no. There was no, like, oh, yeah. G- there was no spot during spot. that era. So the only thing even uh, close to it was the ballets, right? Uh, that sauna was, like, the thing. Because right. that's and why my mom pool. went. No one, w- we couldn't go to a pool. You couldn't like, go to a pool. You either had to go to, like, a public pool at the park. Which my parents like don't know gross. how to swim. Like, I don't know how to no. swim. I, I, who knows how to swim? I, I mean, a lot of people know how to swim. That's actually just maybe just me but like um, <laughs> yes <laughs> my, my dad knows how to swim my mom does not i do not but it's definitely because of maybe because of the sauna but anyways any of you guys listening let's hear, sound off about this ballets thing because it was very strange but i refused to go with my mom to the ballets because i did not why want- did you not want to go how old were you i was in fourth grade oh my god okay so it must have been right around that time they were having some kind of promotion like family like Asian family promotion or something like that. Something. Something it was yeah, going yeah. on. Something was in the okay. air. The Koreans okay. were going going out to the ballets. We were and joining. Your mom was a member. My mom was a m- member. She had been going to the okay. sauna. She liked it. And she was okay. going. I, and also, like, thinking back, I'm like, when was this bitch going? Like, you know what I mean? Like, she got home when, at When did o'clock. she have the time? Exactly. Yeah, she was at the kage most of the day. And then, like, cooking, cleaning, like... I mean, when did she have was, time to go to Bally's Total Fitness? It had to have been just on Sundays. It had to have been just on Sundays. My mom was going on the weekends. Yes. So yeah. she was. She went and she wanted. She liked it. She wanted me to go. And you know, mm. you're also nine. Like this is just at the point where you're recognizing some. You're starting to get some body shame. You're understanding yes. that your body is different. You don't want to be naked. You do not want to be not with your mom. Not with your or any or any other like women or or you know like anybody. Yeah. It's cr- it's crazy and it's gross. So um, <laughs> it's violence. I, it's violence to do yeah. that. But she wanted me to go, and I refused. And I, something about the way I didn't want to go. You know how oh, sometimes shit. you would say something that would like. At the time, it just made no sense, and even like in retrospect. Okay, can we try it? Let me let, let me let me act like your mom. Okay. Okay, let's play the start. Unjia, undongara gaeje. Shiro. That's literally what happened. That's literally what happened. She (laughs) lost her mind. And I remember even at that age being like, this is not normal. You you didn't even say Aish? No. I I was she said Aish. It was it went straight from shit all to Aish. Like it went it went started at zero to just being like a regular snotty kid. Like, I don't want to go. Her. She don't. You pushed her. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Something happened. Something okay. clicked in her where triggered. she was like j- triggered. And mm. she, the beating I got was, I remember <laughs> it started upstairs. I start, and it started. I mean, this is one of these, right? It started it upstairs. It was a progressive beating? Correct. It started Bitch. upstairs with the comb, right? It started <gasps> upstairs with the comb. It started with the comb. It didn't lead oh up to God. the comb. Exactly. This hey, is we're one. talking comb or brush? Comb. The wide. Oh so yeah. <laughs> the, the wide tooth. tooth. The wide tooth. Yeah. And like, and she followed me downstairs. And I'm just like freaked. Because for her to have lost it like that so immediately was unusual. 
Okay. Like that was crazy. Like there was yeah. no ramp up. There was no back and forth. There's usually a, yeah. like, a little bit Some of a screaming. tango. Yeah. There's a little tango. Yeah. There's a dance, baby. Like, you know, and it like it warms up to that. It started off at a boil. So she Whoa. started and I will never forget, like she chased me down. And then um, then she went straight to like just, you know, with pummeling with her hands and all this stuff. And then. Oh, my God. And then, you know, the uh, part the where you just stand with your hands up. Oh, yeah, yeah. On your knees or? On your knees, on your knees, yeah. hands up. And I had to go back upstairs and do that in the landing. This is the only, I lived in, a, I, this is what's crazy is that I lived in this house. We li- lived in a house for two years before it was foreclosed. You know what I mean? Like this was a brief. Oh, I was going to say, wow, you had multiple levels. <laughs> yes, to this on? was a brief time. That's amazing. And it's a, upstairs, not even a basement. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a ranch style house. So there was a small upstairs. And oh, it was okay. like, you know, this is two years where we got to live in this house. Truly. I, I, Until they fucked it up. Fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> and went straight back into the condo we deserved. <laughs> straight into the rental. Um, and so... <laughs> You tell all your friends that you left behind. Like, I just imagine you like leaving that condo and be like, bye, bitches. I got myself a home. It's a ranch, but it's still better than you. You poor bitch. Cut to two years, two years later, you have a black eye. I'm back. Sarah, I'm so sorry I said that to you. This, this, these condos are nice. Like, yeah. This two bedroom apartment is nice. Like, what are you talking about? Wow. But wow. like, so you never went, huh? or did you end up going? I never or? went. I never went. She just you never went. I never she went. She just beat your ass, she, and she was like, "Forget it, forget it, forget you, fuck you, and fuck you too." And then she went Whoa. for like another month. Like it was like such a point of contention. Every time she went, she was just like, "Well, I know you don't want to go. I know you don't want to go." Like it was just something must have, and I don't know. Like it, it's one of those things where sometimes your parents. I've run it up to her. Like been like, don't you remember this? And she does. It was such a bad be- beating. Even she wow. remembers it. And you know yeah. this, Peter. The parents never remember. If the, the parents beating. remember a specific beating they gave you, that must mean that inside their head, there was a moment where they were like, "I took it too far." This is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I'm, I'm becoming my mother. <laughs> you know, like they're just like looking at. The, they're like raven's home you know they're going through the <laughs> into the eyeball and they're like oh shit i've become my parents and then they're back i bet your mom had one of those moments she was like what am i doing this is a gym membership I why mean, am like, i beating her ass over a gym membership i mean it was but i bet so it crazy. wasn't i bet it wasn't knowing you and your mouth i'm not victim blaming i'm not victim blaming i'm just saying i understand where your mom's coming from <laughs> i mean it ha- i i talked to her about it and you know what she said it was just like you like, she was just saying that I was, something about me was like, it was so much that, like, like mm. I said something in a way that really made her, like, it, it's one of those things Flip. where the Where lip. you gave no respect to her. Yes. I bet that's what it was. It was the respect. Because that's what I used to do with my dad. Yeah. I used to talk to my dad as if he was paid to be there. Yes. It was that. It was that. That was sort of and, like true and condescension. They, and yeah, and they like forgot to clock in today. I'm yeah. like, are you fucking stupid? Yes. Like I used to talk to him like that. Uh-huh. Major. I think I and I this is really bad, but I think it's because my mom used to talk to my dad like that. Yeah. Me and too. My, Me too. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's because right. Because my mom was the breadwinner in my house. So mm-hmm. like and you know, as a capitalist, I was like, whoever's making the money is the boss. So she would come home and she would talk down to my dad because yeah. my dad did not make money mm-hmm. or d- didn't really do anything for the house. <laughs> um, and I think he always felt like um, a little, he had that like. Insecurity. Uh, yeah, that chip in his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I would poke, 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 poke. Yes. And I, I had like, I think the way I talked to my dad was so disrespectful. Uh-huh. And I bet that's what it was with you and your mom too. She's just like, chamo. And she chamo. And she's just like being patient until one day she fucking, she's like, okay, I'm going to do something nice. I'm going to sign up my daughter for Bally Total Fitness family membership. <laughs> <laughs> and she like, maybe like went all out of her way to do this for you. And then she presents it to you. You're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where's that comb? <laughs> I mean, it, it's for sure the fact that I was embarrassed 
That was what she was reading. The the embarrassment that I had. That's oh, what really what made you, me what, crazy. Of of going to with the gym mom. or going to the gym? Oh, with your mom. And having her. You, you, you don't want to be seen, seen with, with your her. mom. That's what oh, made her crazy. Wow. That's what made her crazy. Oh, that's so sad. That's heartbreaking. Sure. But also, get it together, lady. I'm nine. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Like, I get it. I mean, I'm a 40-year-old lady with a... I understand that lack of respect. But let's humble yeah. ourselves for a moment. Like, <laughs> yeah. who's getting the respect they deserve? Who doesn't? You know what I mean? <laughs> We're all just trolls out here just hoping that someone wants to be seen with us in public. Like, what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, I do understand. As a parent, yeah. I do really understand. Like, on a level that is probably um, uncomfortable for me, I understand where she was coming from. But I will wow. say that this uh, perspective also doesn't make me feel like what she did was okay. She did lose it. She like fucking no, 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 no. Lose it's not it. okay. But y- yeah, no, I understand. It's definitely, I understand. it's never okay. Yeah. It's never okay. But she did to be- lose her mind, like in a way that yeah. she, like, I would say there are three beatings in my life that she mm. remembers. Because everything else, she was like, oh, oh wow. there's three. The rest of them, she's like, what are you even talking about? Like, she's like, <laughs> like, she's like oh, you're going to cry about that? Okay, boo-hoo. <laughs> big fucking deal. So I deal. pushed you into traffic. Yeah. Great, big deal. <laughs> so what? I ran into, like, the um, McDonald's drive through sign. Big deal. Um, <laughs> something. <laughs> But, um, but like she, everything else she doesn't remember. Like, you know, this, like that sort of like, especially if it's sort of habitual, like oh, yeah. kind of abuse, like it's, it's all lost in the wash of life, you know? Sure. Yeah. But there's three beatings that she remembers and all three of them, she will begrudgingly be like, I, I did beat you. And every mm-hmm. single time she'll wait a beat and be like, but you deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of course. You are such There's a no little way. shit. Like, I fucking, uh, you deserved oh it. Oh, my God. And the way that she'll smile when she remembers these beatings, mm. it's like it's like she's recalling a good time. Like, when she really <laughs> got it. She's like, yeah, I got you, girl. I got you good. Like, Damn, someone should have been taping that shit. Fuck. <laughs> she'll truly, like, she'll smile like a little and be like, yeah, but you deserved it. And, like, you were not right. Like She's like. Oh, yeah, I used to be so limber, man. I used to beat your ass <laughs> and then go on a walk. But now that? it's like she's just like she's just like um, uh, uh, missing the times that she was an agile woman. <laughs> now she's like can't beat no one's ass. <laughs> it's, my mom. You know. Now, my mom made my dad was the one who beat us. So like. My mom was always trying to stop it from happening. Oh wow! But it was it it was rarely effective because you know (laughs) dads. And um, but I do remember one beating from my mom. No, two. One of them wasn't a beating. One one of them was straight up like um, hechori, like a switch. Yeah. And I had to put my legs up, and she was like, um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, hitting me with uh, the the switch, switch. Yeah. which is not a beating. That's just parenting. <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> well, parenting well. Um, I mean, that's. I mean, that's kids so need funny. to get beat. Kids need to get fucking beat. Um, sure. I know I don't have kids, but like I'm willing to beat y'all's kids. <laughs> Because there's, I'll tell you what, there were no school, school shooters during when I was young. Peter, okay? don't be so fucking. And we had guns too. Trust stop, me. Stop. Um. Anyway, so Toxic uh, my mom. Ass. My, <laughs> so my mom <clears throat> switch beat me once, and mm-hmm. that was terrible. But I remember why. It's because it was in kindergarten. During nap time, I went up to a kid, Michael Cho, and I looked at his Spider-Man watch, and I told him it was my birthday last week, and he needed to give it to me. Ah! So, so I stole his Spider-Man. Yeah, watch you, so you, I, you just mugged that bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you just straight up like stole. It was a day day mugging. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> kindergarten. Uh, this is like a two in the afternoon. Know, yeah. He didn't see what was coming. Yeah. <laughs> but what was you wearing? <laughs> um, the Spider-Man watch. So I bring the Spider-Man watch home and my mom's like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. And I go, oh, my friend gave it to me. And she goes, really? Your friend gave it to you? I know the truth. They can afford to give this away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They owe me money. <laughs> so I was like, and after a while, you know, my, my mom, I'm five years old, so my mom's like, what happened? Yeah. She was, I was like, oh, I told him it was my birthday and he gave it to me, blah, blah. And she whooped my ass for that. And yeah. I remember that being like such a eye-opening experience because I had never been hit by my mom before that. Mm-hmm. But this was like her way of saying like, you cannot do don't this. Don't do that, yeah. Uh, don't ever do that again. Um, and then the second time I remember when I was 14, I was cutting class a lot. And they were like, I don't know if you- And Bronx Science? Like, <clears throat> oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. I was cutting cl- school, cutting class. I was leaving in the middle of the day to get drunk in the city. Like, I was just, I was a derelict. Peter, um, I was you at pool so hall, hard smoking to get, cigarettes. You work so hard to get in. It's one of the <laughs> That's what my mom said. <laughs> oh, I hate you. That's exactly what my mom said. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. And I was like, oh. God, I got into the school. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, my God. That really takes me back. I'm like having PTSD right now. (laughs) What? That's the term. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. It means like a lazy fuck. Yeah. Like foolishness. Yeah. yeah, Like, yeah. 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 Like, I know. I think about how often that shit was just thrown at me. Like, oh, my God. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, our parents throw the worst shit at us. Um, and but this time my mom, what she did, she was you know getting older. Yeah. And I was fourteen, so I was like taller than her. Exactly. And like bigger. Yeah. So she couldn't hit me because mm-hmm. she would hurt herself. Right. So she ended up going to the bookcase and started throwing encyclopedias at me. The World Book. The World Books. Oh my god. And let me tell you, she went straight for M. <laughs> The big ones. P. Yes. <laughs> Those are the big ones. <laughs> and then, you know, the C's, it went from like C to C E and C E to uh-huh. like C Z. Yeah. Those she are threw big. both C's at me. Whoa. Like she, yeah, she was going crazy. Uh, you, she, I, you didn't even get a, you didn't, you didn't get an S T U or U V? Like, no. <laughs> no ones. way. No X, nothing. <laughs> she was like, I'm going for the hard, big ass ones. Oh my God. And then she was throwing it at my head too. Like, I was like, truly doing it. It was like the Matrix. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Like parrying out of the way, and one of them hit me in the head, and I remember like the corner hit my head, <gasps> and I was crying, and I That's was just leather so... bound. That's leather bound. Yeah, gold yeah, leaf. it's hard. Yeah. Exactly, gold leaf. Exactly. <laughs> and my mom was, uh, my mom felt really bad afterwards because I don't think she like meant to do that wanted yeah. she wanted a flat part to hit me but anyway that's the last time i got hit by my mom and um i i remember thinking like this is the last this is the last like age of this like mm-hmm. once we get past this time 15 yeah. there's no there's no physical none of that mm-hmm. you know like it's just gonna be us yelling at each other or yeah. whatever and like you know as i grew, grew up she stopped hitting me physically mm-hmm. uh but she made sure to hit me emotionally <laughs> Those and to those really beatings, take me down. I, arguably, those hurt more. Like I remember, way more. Those I, bruises yes. don't show, but <laughs> they'll stick around. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like I remember at fifteen, that was the last time I really got big trouble. Like that was my last big beating, and the reason oh. why it stopped was because I fought back, and it was be- to- totally exactly. Be- and that's when like, they know they're like, oh. Wow, this is the my end of progeny an era. has become exactly. Yes. It's when you become, you know, like insufficient, yes. and then your child becomes, you know, and that's a tough time, I'm sure, for parents. It's because they have to put down the they have to put down the comb and then pick mm. up the emotional paddle. Like they, you know what I mean? Like for yes. them, they have to like <laughs> there's like a passing of the baton where they yeah. can no longer use physical. So now they have to use all of the emotional abuse they have yeah. saved up. Because exactly. now you can really digest it, and like, and then yeah. the sparring can really begin. I mean, when exactly. I think about all the my argumentative style, mm-hmm. that's where it started. That's that's the beginning of it. Like when I think about how I oh, argue yeah. with my husband, back yes, at, yeah, exactly. Like mm-hmm. the sort of passive aggressive, sort of like mm-hmm. sniping, like all that yeah. shit really kind of. But, like it really kind of started I, when I think back on it. That's the beginning of my the formidable ages. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so but your oh, husband yeah. has your mom to thank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, truly. My, mom, really my mom's turning 65. At oh, the that's end a of the big month. age in Korean. Big age, yeah. right? She's coming. To, uh, uh, she's coming to LA, and we're gonna. First, she's going to Vegas with her friends. Okay. This is the third time she's gone to Vegas in six months. Something's wrong. Yeah, is she okay? She's not coming back richer. <laughs> I'll tell you that. She's not making money. <sighs> anyway, so she's, she's going to Vegas, and then I gave her cash at the beginning of the year. Okay. And I think she's almost done with it. Shut up. Since I gave her cash, she's gone to Vegas twice. I mean, and she I knows- gave her cash on Christmas. Uh, wait, she knows it's that this March. Is, she knows that this is an annual contribution, not a quarterly. One. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> I made sure of that. She signed it with blood. <laughs> like she understands this is an annual contribution. I was like, you're the- not getting a cent more until next Christmas. Yeah, this and is. She said yes verbally. Yeah. yeah, I have it on camera. Okay, and it is admissible in a court of law. <laughs> she can't ask me for no money. I mean, this is. And she. I mean, she's trying to pull an NPR thing where it's like an annual contribution, but then they're doing pledge drives throughout the year. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's no, happening? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't care if she does pledge drives because this donor's <laughs> out of money. And I, I told her, it's you're not getting any more from me, so do not use it mm. all at once. Yeah. And she, she's going to Vegas for a second time in three months, and I'm like. I know she's not going there for like shows or buffets. Sure. This bitch is going there to lose money, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, of course, and my brother was like, "Why are you? Give, why didn't you do installments? Are you stupid? Why would you give a, a lump sum?" And I'm like, "Cause I don't care. I don't want to. I'm. I'm. It's not like I'm going to give her more money, you know." And he was like, "You say that now." Mm-hmm. And then she comes crawling around, and I'm like, "No, I'm going to be strong." And I'm not giving her any money. But what so if she, she, she starts to stretch you? No, she won't. <laughs> she, I, I'm, I have been working on my stuff. I'm doing my breathing exercises. <gasps> <laughs> what if, what if, what if she's also leaning up against your grundle and it's like she's pushing you and she's stretching no, you? No, unless she looks like my dad, <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. <laughs> so she's coming into town um, at the end of the month and. Um, I decided, I was like, what do, what do you get your mom for 65th birthday? Is it Did your mom deal? turn 65 yet? Mm-hmm. My mom is, she, she, she's 73. <gasps> oh, why? Your mom's that much older than my mom? Mm-hmm. Almost 10 years. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so 70 was big. 70 was big, but not as because it was during pandemic and everything, but 65 uh, was big. Did uh, you guys do something for her? I mean, she didn't really, I mean, the thing is my parents don't have any friends. So that's the sure, whole point. Like sure. the whole point of that is to like kind of flex on your friends. Right. It's right. kind of like the whole point of it. Have a big it. party. Have a big party, blah, blah, flex blah. on people, celebrate with your family, my family. Have them bring tone. Exactly. Um, yeah. So no, we just gave them money. I just gave her money. But yeah, I, I don't know. know what to do. I'm like, I'm just going to, I stopped. Now I'm not giving her money anymore. I'm just giving her experiences because she lived her whole life as like an immigrant woman in New York. Sure. So she's never been anywhere. So You're now the I'm Vegas. Like, yeah, that's the most immigranty thing you can think of. Yeah, my parents, my like, parents, once a year go to the lake. <laughs> <laughs> that's their big trip. That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the lake. The lake is four miles from them. It's like it, it, they yeah. could walk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they see it from their house. <laughs> like um, absolutely not. But <laughs> they. <laughs> They live almost by the expressway, but like, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but like, they, yeah, they just have never, never gone anywhere. So I mean, like, they wow. are. She's experiencing things. Like, she's going to Vegas. She lives in fucking Hawaii now. Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. She can that's, flex. That's the only thing I can do for her now because there's nothing I can like buy her or give her anymore. Because like, what could I possibly buy her? Like clothes sure like a, a nice bag sure this is like you know, the immigrant like, good son right you get her a bag this is the thing uh, i've like, gotten whatever. her plenty of bags she has yeah. no she's she lives in the whole i guess she's going to vegas with a friend she could take a bag there but like i don't know like what's a woman at her age gonna do with a nice nice bag like let's say we get her like a i don't know like a ysl bag or like mm-hmm. a chanel bag mm-hmm. she's the type to never even if something's so expensive she's never she won't even take it out of the house you know what I mean? So she yeah. can't even flex. So there's no even point. So if I'm going to spend like thousands of dollars on a mm-hmm. gift, I'd rather spend it on like a vacation or experience. So um, I'm taking her to Santa Barbara. Oh. Yeah. And I'm, we're going to do like a little 
three night getaway. Me, her, the dogs, my younger brother, my partner. So we're gonna have like a little family getaway okay. and take her take her out for her birthday and that's it. I I I don't, I, I don't know. My mom hasn't gotten me a gift since I was. Sixteen? <laughs> Sixteen, maybe? I think she got me socks. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, when did she get me a gift? When I mean, did my mom ever buy me something? Oh Hold on. I'm Literally, I'm thinking now. When you started saying that, I was like, yeah, I don't know when the last time my parents got me a gift. A gift, right? Or even on your birthday, it's like, do they call and say, like, Sengi chukahe? Yeah, they do do that. Um, and my mom okay. makes, like, you know. Miyoko? Miyoko, yeah. Uh, she's close, so that's good. My yeah. mom probably would come over. Yeah, my mom would make me food. That's a love language, right? Yeah. They uh, lacks of service. Or whatever. That's a love language when you have no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, I would love to would love to experience what it would be like to have another love language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would love to experience what it's like to have besides seaweed soup. <laughs> And Thanks, then, mom. and then a guilt no. a guilt trip because I didn't eat enough of it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like, would love to experience another love language, but um, <laughs> and to have parents with enough money to express it that way. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. But again, I'm That'd not complaining. Nice. It's it's like it is what it is. But like, you've accepted it. I've accepted it. I mean, yeah. Your gift is very good. I would say. Do you but think that's she because I want to spend time with my mom. Yes, yes. I don't know if you do. I want to buy out. I want to buy out that time. Like I would love to be able to just <laughs> give her money and be like, <laughs> like can we do you're a like, cash out? here's all this money. You cannot talk to me. <laughs> don't like, call me. Don't come over. Don't try like, to see my kids. For like two weeks. Give me two weeks. Yeah. Off. Off. <laughs> Would love to be able Send to buy her this. somewhere. Send her somewhere. <laughs> they would, they would she would be away go. from you. They would never want to go anywhere. I've asked them. My husband yeah. and I, especially when things were better, like when uh, times were a little more flush, we uh -huh. offered to like pay and send them somewhere. Send them on a cruise or something. No interest. No interest. Zero interest. Active, wow. active disinterest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that that makes me sad. Not though, like I mean, uh, yeah. like that makes me sad because they work so hard. They work so hard. They work so fucking hard to, you know, raise. Yes, you, this. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like truly, like I think they're at a point where they're too old to experience something new. That's literally what my mom said. Mm, like I, like, we put, do it, not put her into shock. Yes, but I. Here's the thing, I, your parents, my mom. I don't know if they're like the experienced new type of peeps. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. conservative. Mm -hmm. They want things to be the same. Yes. They want things like smaller. Yes. You know, and you and I being the product of them and our world, we want things to be bigger, expansive, curious. What else is out there? More, more, more insatiable. Mm -hmm. And they're like the complete opposite. So like, it's hard to, as you age, as 40-year-old Korean Americans, with our, like, dutiful child thing, you know, I know, like, you you think you don't do that, but you do. Yeah. You do the dutiful daughter thing. You do. And there's no way you can escape it because you're the only daughter. Yeah. Like, me, at least I have brothers. Like, you can't get away from this. I so you're that. stuck. <laughs> I'm just telling you your trauma. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, I know. You have no one to bear the load with. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, the the trip is a very big deal. Like, it's very nice, but I, there's like a you know, there's a part of it that's like the traditional gift is just money, you know. But you already sure. gave it to her. You already gave her money, so it's I like I gave her money. And the thing is, like, I don't want to give her money because I don't trust her. Mm. I don't trust her with money. I really don't. And you know what? Okay, before Christmas. I, uh, she came here mm. um, to visit and whatever, and then she was like, "Oh, wish she get up, so yeah. like, why don't you have a, a clock, clock in your house?" And I was like, "Why do we need a clock? Yeah, like we have our phones. I have mm. my watch. We have a oven that has a you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, in a house there must be a clock. Yes, you must have a clock on the wall. It is distinct. You have to put it in the house, right? 
And I'm like, I just don't think like millennials look at clocks anymore. No. Like we're constantly looking at a clock. Yes. You know? So I don't know. I was just like, I don't think so. I don't think this. She was like, Oh, no, come on, and you can't live like that. Yeah. What kind of house doesn't have a clock in it? <gasps> and then she starts put, bringing it upon herself. Like, how did I raise you <laughs> that you don't have no clock? You are clockless. <laughs> I, I gave up everything to come here to work all my my bones to not even work my phone, and now you don't have no clock. <laughs> And I'm like, this bitch will take anything and make it into her sob story. You know what I mean? Like one time she came yes. to Chicago and visited me. I, I, I don't know if you remember me in Chicago. <laughs> but, uh, when we met. Yeah. Uh, well, we've known each other for yes. a long time. But when we started like hanging out in Chicago, mm-hmm. I was living with our friend Jack. Yes. And um, before that, I had gone through some traumatic bed bug situation yes so i was living in a hammock he, is this the hammock no, era correct hammock, i was in my hammock era <laughs> i had no clothes i had books and i had no nothing like just like a crate of books and some um like t-shirts and stuff i forgot about and the hammock like, era and, and like i said i was in chicago doing comedy there was no point of looking good having uh, any possessions there was none of that you know like it was just like nose to the grindstone let's go that being said you are working your core because you're getting in and out of the hammock (laughs) yeah oh yeah honey i was stacked okay i had abs for days that's how i got my partner eric we we first hooked up when i was in the hammock Hammock he was like look at this freak see this is this is this is truly a testament to if he wants to he would okay this bitch was in a hammock (laughs) (laughs) and that did not stop him he looked at me trying to get out of that hammock getting into all sorts of positions and cramps and he was like oh yeah I'm a fuck that. <laughs> That's what I mean. If he wants to, he would. Okay. Well, he will. <laughs> this man in his hammock era landed quite possibly one of the most handsome comedians around. <laughs> That's why I had to take him off out of the comedy market because he was too hot. I was like, not you. Leave. Um, anyway, so I was in my hammock era and my mom came to visit in Chicago and she got so stinking drunk and this was after my ETC show my second Mm -hmm. city show and she got so drunk and on the Uber back she starts like crying in the Uber (sighs) she goes I can't believe you live like this (laughs) and I'm like oh this is a choice mother like I left (laughs) tech and (laughs) I'm now living in a hammock a 21 year old college student <laughs> meanwhile i'm 33 in a hammock and i have nothing to my name and no clothes and she was like i'll say this korean i'll i'll i'll, uh, I'll translate it she was like ani kunde we pants ga opso we pants ga opso e ga oh my god you don't kick you in the day we pants ga on the koya i was like amma i'm doing laundry she's like where are your panties where are your panties? Where's your underwear? How come you don't have underwear? I, I worked so hard to give you this life and you have no underwear. I was like, mother, it's in the hamper. And she was like, you don't have enough underwear so that it's all in the hamper. There's not one clean one. And I was like, mom, it's fine. They're in the hamper. I'm going to do the laundry. But she was so drunk. She kept going. I don't know. She's like hitting her chest. Like, oh, what? Julia. I can't believe you have no underwear. You're 33 years old. You have no underwear. You're sleeping in a hammock. You're going to die alone. And you know, she's like. (laughs) Anyway, this is why I don't like when my mom visits. Because she takes any opportunity to make it about herself. Oh, my gosh. You got no. how she's a failure. You got no panties. You got no plaque. You got no bed. Yeah. So anyway, oh, the, to round out this story, she was here before Christmas, and she she complained about how I had no clock and what kind of life is that. And blah, yes, blah. she's yes. always taking anything of my life and making it like a sorrow. Oh situation, my gosh! Right? I mean, truly, it is wild. I mean, all immigrant <laughs> parents are like this. It's like they don't realize what they're doing, and it's just like. Bitch, sometimes you're just doing laundry. Sometimes. Yeah, like it doesn't mean, not everything has to mean something like. Not everything is about. Just because I don't have a clock on the wall doesn't mean I'm a failure, mom. Like, not everything is about. Not everything is about you. About not, you. It's not everything is about you and our struggle to get here. Sometimes it's just shit. Sometimes and it's also, just life. If your son doesn't have a clock on it, don't tell your friends. 
Okay, then you won't be embarrassed. Just keep it from your friends. This is all about you and your status with your friends. Don't tell them oh I don't have God. a clock. Okay? The oppressive, the the oppression of the charang. The oppression oh of the charang is like something that should be documented and studied. 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 Yes. It must be studied because... By psychotherapists. By psychotherapists. Because yes. the the oppression of the charang, which is um, the flex... Like yes. that's literally the, the flex that yeah. is required by Korean parents to do unto other Korean parents, other uh -huh. strangers. Like sometimes if there aren't enough Korean people around, sometimes my mom will just charang to white people and you can see them be confused. Wow. Like, right. like, I don't like, know, we're just having, that sounds sad. That sounds, <laughs> and they're like, we were just having a small talk. You're t fully telling me about your daughter's SAT scores. Like why? <laughs> Are we doing this? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, this is inappropriate. See, but the thing is, like, this is their social media. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we have social media to post about, like, look at what I'm doing, slipping, blah, blah, blah. Like, they don't have that. So they have to do their, their version, which is my son doesn't have a clock, right? <laughs> so my mom, uh, I'll just wrap it up with this. She, for Christmas, sent me and Eric... We've been together for eight years. Mm -hmm. She's never sent us um, a gift. Of course. She's never sent us like a Christmas thing, yes. birthday, nothing, right? Yeah. But after coming here, she sends us a gift. And she goes, I sent it in the mail. Like to, uh, when you get it, like call me. And I was like, okay. We get this large box in the mail. Oh, We're it's a like, large Holy box. Holy shit. Yeah. This, is, this is unlike my mother. Yeah. Like to send a large gift box like a gift like Let's go to a, a post office like all fuck? of this yeah yeah right so i'm like so excited and i like rip it open and what tell me why i find a plastic barely painted cuckoo clock <laughs> <laughs> and it says in the back in big bold letters made in vietnam <laughs> and <laughs> This child barely painted it before it passed I, away. <laughs> <laughs> like, with its final breaths, did he a was few like, strokes. <laughs> few strokes, and he went fully blind because of the lead in the paint. Like, and he... <laughs> his, like, his, like, final words are scribbled in the paint. <laughs> yeah. Tell my story. <laughs> Inspected by number 3014. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom sent us a plastic cuckoo clock. Oh my god! And I open it. And I'm like, "What the fuck?" And I call my mom. I was like, "Mom, we got this. What is this?" She was like, "Oh, it's a cuckoo clock." And I was like, "Why did you send me this?" And she was like, "Cause you guys don't have a clock." And I was like, "Okay." Your clockless you ex existence. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing me and my friends. <laughs> so I was like, "You could have just sent any clock. Why did you send this clock where it has to make a sound or whatever?" And she was like, "Piroya." When I went to your house, it feels so sad. And if you put this up, <laughs> it's going to be fun for you. And I said, okay, thank you, mother. And we took it directly to the Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> this is Korean parents' um, idea I, of what is fun is truly born out of a war. Like, it is true. Like, yeah. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> Full trauma mode. Oh, my God. Oh, my so God. Funny. If you have any fun stories about your crazy parents, please send them in on our socials. You can still email us at ajimashow at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Check out our Patreon. Leave us a, uh, a review. That really helps us out. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.